So you and I both likely know that YouTube content creation can be a lot. It can be difficult, it can be stressful, it can lead to burnout, but I don't believe that it has to do that. I think with the right systems, with the right planning, with the right workflow, that it can work for you. So in today's video, we're talking about my entire YouTube workflow, how I pump out videos from start to finish, what all that entails, etc. Okay, so that's what you're interested in and that's what you're here for. Let's go ahead and hop in. So as content creators, it can seem like we pump out videos and it's just like a seamless process. You know, it's like, oh, she's flying out videos like two to three times a week. Then all you gotta do is record and a little bit and put it up. There's so much more that goes into it. There's so much more that goes into it for me and my team as well. And so I just wanted to kind of pull back the curtain for you guys and allow you like into our world of how we literally go from A to Z when it comes to getting a YouTube video up. So that's what I wanna do for you with this video in terms of the YouTube video workflow, okay? Now, these are my steps. You don't have to do all these steps if they don't apply to you at all. But this is what me and my team do. This is what I do whenever I'm pumping out a video. And so I'll be sure, because I know everybody doesn't have like a video editor or a team to help them do this, but is 1000% okay and this can be done with or without a team, because I've done it with and without a team. And so I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps of how to do it with the team and without as well, in case you all don't have a team right now, which again, you do not need to get this thing done. So let's hop into number one. So part one of my workflow is I research. So I do legitimate research to figure out like which videos I want to post. And so I do this through multiple ways. So when I say research, I'm really trying to figure out, again, which videos I wanna post, what topics I wanna talk about, what themes I wanna have, etc. So when it comes to this, usually within my phone, I have a note section in my phone where I will write down like reels idea, like reels slash TikTok ideas. Then I'll also write down video ideas that I have as I'm just going throughout my day. So I'll go back through those notepads and see what I just wrote down when I was out at the grocery store or when I talked to this person and they triggered an idea to make a video on. I'll write that stuff down and I'll come back to that during my research phase. Another way I do my research, like true research, is I really go to the YouTube search bar and I'll type in, if I know that there's like a theme or a topic or something that people really wanna hear more about, I'll type it into the YouTube search bar and just see what pops up. If my, like, if my mind sparks on anything that pops up there, I will make a video on that. So an example of this, if I was to type in content creation on in the YouTube search bar, what else came up with that? If there was something else that I was like, ooh, that'd be a really good video, I would take that and leverage that and add it to my like ideas category within my content calendar. Also, one of the best ways that I do my research is I will go, this is what I recommend you all do, it's what I recommend my clients do, I will go to other, um, I don't like to call them competitors, but other channels that are within my niche, or within my kind of like online space, and I will see what content they're creating and what is working for them. Because if it's working for them and we have similar audiences, what if I take that same video and put my own rendition on it. And I will say I never use, I never watch the videos just so I don't like then make a duplicate of that same video that's already out there. I wanna put my own spin on it. I may just use their like topic, their title, mix it up a little bit so that it's based around what I wanna talk about, but that's already proved out there that this video is working and it's good to go. So there we go. And a perfect example of this is the best camera for YouTube. There's so many, content creators that have videos on this thing, but every single person's perspective or opinion on the best camera for YouTube may be different. But so you can take that same title and then literally create your own video based on that main title. So I will do that. I will also go inside of the video, I pause it to make sure I don't watch it, and then I go into the comment section and I'll see if any, like if their audiences or if they're people are, if they are asking questions down there, I will take notes of those. If they are saying, hey, I would love to see a video on this, I will take notes of those if that's something I want to create a topic on. These are real people confirming that they really wanna hear that. Another way too is I go to my own channel and I see like what you all want to see from me. I ask you all all the time, I have polls over on my Instagram, etc. I'll take all those, those ideas and I put them in one section of my content calendar as the ideas bucket. So another great resource is called Answer the Public, which you can go there and it literally pulls like search terms from all over the internet, all over the interwebs. And so you can use that as a great resource to find out what people are wanting answers to so that you can make videos to be the answer to their problem or what they're wondering. So 
There's a research phase, number one. Number two is my content calendar is pretty robust. <laughs> and not in a bad, overwhelming way at all, but it's robust because we have a lot of content we wanna be pumping out and it has to be very, very organized, especially when I'm working with a team, okay? So I do have a video editor and I do have an assistant. And so I do have to make sure that I'm organized so that they can also be organized as well and they know what's going on, I know what's going on. We're all like enmeshed, we're all flowing well. Okay, I will take the ideas that I have and I'll put them in the section that is just for like my brainstorming, my ideas section. I like to call this like my dump all, like like no need to like have to have the right keywords and everything, just like my ideas only section. I have that on my content calendar. So that's number two. So now that I have this big bucket of ideas and now it's written down and it's notated in my content calendar, what I like to do is I like to go through and sort which ones I'm gonna use that month. So I typically try to look at planning out at least two to three months in advance of like the topics I'm gonna talk about. Even if that's vlogs, I'll just say like Dan Life vlog or so-and-so, so-and-so vlog or something like that just to make sure. But I love doing this to make sure that my content stays um, not all in like one theme or one category or one topic. I like to make sure it's pretty like, not broad, but spread out in terms of the topics that I'm talking about that relate to my audience and what we do. So that's what I'll say. And then from there, I then will give it the individual categories that I have on my content calendar. So I like to indicate if the CTA is literally going to another video or if it's going to my um, private training or if it's going to whatever it's going to, whatever that looks like, I like to be sure to indicate that on my content calendar. That way when I look at my calendar, I can see, okay, um, I need to make sure I'm not pushing people off the YouTube platform more than I am, you know, keeping them on there. So by keeping them on there, I'm putting them to another video or to a playlist, etc. And me being able to like visibly see that in my content calendar is like really nice. So that's a big thing that I like to do too, is I like to go ahead and give all the different categories in terms of the topic, in terms of the theme of the video, in terms of the CTA. I also like to give it the category of like, when am I gonna film this video? Like what is the filming date that I'm gonna film this? And then what's the posting date as well? This really, this is where my team starts to get involved. This is really helpful for them to be able to like look at their schedules and make sure that we can get certain videos. Like they're gonna be filmed on a certain time and maybe my video editor has two weeks. Now we now know kind of back, like backing it up what the timing is required, what the timing required is in order to get this video out. Step number four is I actually like to outline my videos. I like to, when I say outline, it's the same as scripting, but I try not to, I try to give myself bullet points to like give myself the ability to kind of flow, like ebb and flow off of what I'm talking about rather than trying to remember every single word that I wrote down in my script. So I do like to outline and I will outline the whole video. I will try to do this in a batch as well. So I'll try to sit down and I'll say, okay, if I'm filming, usually I do this on Thursdays. I'll say, if I'm filming, you know, three videos, or I decided I'm filming three videos on Saturday, then I need to obviously have those videos scripted by Saturday. So I usually try to do it on Thursday, just in case something comes up on Friday. I have no excuses as to why I'm not filming on Saturday. So I try to get it done on Thursday, get my videos outlined, and should be good to go from there. I would also like to mention too, I used to try to batch like seven videos at a time and I just realized like over time with my channel that just was not working. I would lose steam around like the third or fourth video. And so I usually will try to batch at most like two to three videos at a time, like on a Saturday or something. And like even right now I'm actually filming a vlog as well as this video. So I filmed two sit down videos like this today, as well as I'm filming a vlog. So that's three videos in total. So that's a nice way to kind of go about it, but I only have to do, or only, sorry, I get to do two sit down videos, which is nice. So just FYI, whenever it comes to batching and all that, if you wanna know like my actual like scheduling process, let me know and I can make a whole separate video about that. Step five is I film my content. And so I have tons of videos on what it looks like to have a filming day with me, which I will put on the screen for you guys to check out. And what happens on my filming days is usually I like to film on Saturdays. I just got a new light, so I'm super excited to test that out. And that way I can then kind of film on any day I want to. I don't have to worry about the, um, the natural light, et cetera, which we're just filming with natural light right now. So we, we make it and do what it do, okay, for free. However, I did just get a light to kind of like liven up the channel a little bit. But anyway, whenever it comes to filming, I like to have my apartment clean before filming day. That way I, I don't feel like I have to like shoot in certain angles and make sure certain things aren't in the shot. And I don't wanna have to do all that, okay? I wanna be able to pick the camera up and film anywhere in my apartment and feel comfortable with what you guys are going to see overall instead of feeling like I have to only show certain things. Also, I just like a clean house and so I try to clean on either Thursday or Friday. 
so I like to be sure to clean. Another thing too that I sometimes like to do is I like to get my eyebrows done and I like to do my lashes. The reason why is because it just makes it easier to put on makeup. If you, if you know me and you know me well, I usually don't wear makeup during the week. Um, and if I do, it's because I'm going somewhere very specific, but otherwise I usually don't put on makeup unless I am actually filming on Saturday. So anyway, I like to get my eyebrows done and my nails, which I got my nails done and they are from, they're press-ons y'all. They are press-ons, okay? Look, I got them from Static Nails. But anyway, sorry, it's not the point of the video. <laughs> but um, they're press ons and they're so cute. So I like to have my nails done, my eyebrows done, and my lashes done. It just makes putting on makeup so much faster and more seamless, rather than me having to do all of that and a whole full face and do my nails at the same time. And my, oh my God, and my hair. I like to figure out what I'm gonna do with my hair. So if I'm wearing a wig, I like to prep her before the filming day, okay? If she needs to be washed, I like to do that before the filming day. I don't wanna be spending half of my day on filming day prepping to film. I would rather spend most of that time actually filming. And so my hair is in braids, which is amazing, okay? And so that way it, there was not much to do when it comes to my hair on the actual filming day. So that's what I do for filming day. Again, I'm gonna put that video in the cards for you guys and down below in the description box to check out what a true filming day really looks like with me. Okay, so number six is right after I film my video, Usually, supposed to be right after I film my video, I like to um, upload the, the clips into this system that I use to send my clips over to my video editor. So right now we've been using Google Drive and Google Drive is nice, I love, I love Google in general. But what I will say is we are starting to kind of test out a new system called frame.io in terms of sending clips over to um, my video editor. And I got this tip from Vanessa Lau who's on YouTube and that's what she uses to send her content over to her video editor. And so we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see if we like it. If we don't, we just go back to, to Google Drive. But what we've been doing in Google Drive is I will up, upload my footage into like a folder specifically called and numbered um, based on that video. So also something that, that I don't want to forget to mention is that every video within my content calendar has a number. That way, instead of me going to my video editor and I'm like, hey, where is the video about my, um, my equipment and all the equipment I have in my house, rather than me saying, hey, where are we at on video 42? You know what I mean? Very different. It's just, it's just organization. I just like it. So in that way, everybody across, everybody, everybody that works with us, it's like, okay, video 42 is here. Instead of us being like, oh, the, the video with the equipment and the background and it, 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 what, like, you know what I mean? So we like to put a number to each video overall. And so what we've been doing is like the folder that I have in Google Drive. So I have a folder called like video editing that he of course has access to. And then with every folder, say the video is like 48, and I would name it 48 and then I would name it or whatever the, the number is of course. And then I would name it based on the title. And then I add the clips straight into that Google Drive. Either way, this is the process of me uploading the clips to send to my video editor, no matter like what we're using, Google Drive or Frame.io or whatever. I also like to go ahead and save myself a copy of that video on my external hard drive. And what I've been doing, which I got this tip from Catherine Manning, is to be sure that um, I have a hard drive for all of my footage that I have per year. And so I have a 2022 actual like hard drive, a big old hard drive, like four terabytes that I put all of my footage on. I don't want to delete any of my footage anymore. And so I am going ahead and uploading that into my hard drive as well as sending it over to my video editor. So yes. Now, what I did promise you guys is I would talk to you guys about what to do if you don't have a team or you don't have a video editor to help you, which is okay. You don't necessarily need it if you aren't at that place to have it right now and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? What I, what I still would do is I would still take those clips and I would upload it onto my computer, like not my computer, because I don't want my computer to blow up and get all slow. I upload it to my hard drive. That way when it comes um, to the editing process, I'm not going through like trying to find uh, all the clips and stuff from all these different memory cards and trying to figure out which memory card it was on. No, that's why I try to make myself right after filming, go to my computer and then literally upload the clips to my hard drive. Again, that way when it comes to editing, I'm good to go and everything is in one place. Especially if I filmed B-roll and the B-roll's on another memory card, then during the editing process, I'm spending half the time going to find the memory card, with all the clips on it, and it's just, 
it's just a lot, okay? And then sometimes I'll forget that I filmed something because if I film so frequently, sometimes I can forget a whole video. So anyway, that's why I like to go ahead and put it, like store it, go ahead and upload the footage, not to YouTube, again, to my hard drive, my external hard drive. I like to go ahead and do that. That way when it comes time to edit, I make sure I'm not missing any clips or any videos for you guys that are just kind of like sitting and hanging out that you guys have never even seen. That's happened so many times. So those are the two different ways I would do it, either with working with a video editor or doing it by yourself. Step number seven, I will say this step is kind of a two part step, I guess to say. Step number seven is SEO. And you will see that in my calendar where I have a whole, like a kind of a Kanban style process of where I like to have the videos like at within my calendar. So when it comes to SEO, that is getting the title right, getting the thumb or the tags or yeah, tags right, the description box, getting all that stuff good to go. That's SEO portion, that's me doing my research if I hadn't already. Typically, I have already done my keyword research on that topic, but I have not done my description box and I have not done my tags. And so in that section, that's where I go ahead and do the SEO part while my video editor is actually editing the video. That way we can be kind of doing two things separately and it's like hurry it up. So that way it's not like taking me time to edit and do SEO. It's nice to kind of like be able to give that task over to somebody else. It's just like, it's just really nice. It's been the absolute best. Next, and I and I will say seven and eight are kind of interchangeable. Sometimes I do one before the other, but typically I do SEO is number seven, then number eight, I do my thumbnail. I can really design my thumbnail to obviously be based off the video <laughs> that I created. And so I do like to try to use either some of the keywords that I did in my keyword research, or I like to play with my thumbnail and let it like feed off of the title. So say the title is, eight mistakes that content creators make, which I literally just filmed. So eight mistakes that a content creator made or can make in the very beginning or something like that, whatever. And maybe the thumbnail is saying, I won't ever do it again. You see what I'm saying? So that kind of plays off of the actual title or sometimes I will have the thumbnail be very clear about what the video is actually about because it won't ever happen again, it's not clear. And so whenever it comes to the thumbnail, again, sometimes I'll have it play off the title or sometimes I will have it directly related to the title overall. But I like to figure that out as I've done my research, as I've kind of looked at looked at everything online to see like what they're doing and what's successful, et cetera. Because YouTube has been out for a while and there's plenty of actual like research and knowledge out there that we can leverage rather than like reinventing the entire world. Then number nine is of course, um, everything is done. I got my video back. I have a thumbnail applied. I have all the SEO there. So I go ahead and schedule my video out or and or go ahead and uh, like post it. So I upload the video and then of course I get it posted or scheduled. Most of the time I do schedule it because I don't post it at the exact time. I like to schedule it just to make sure everything is good to go. I would like to say too, like typically when I'm on my game, when I'm on my game, I will say I will be about two weeks ahead of schedule, okay? So if you guys saw a video on the 14th of January, it probably was uploaded on the 1st of January and scheduled that day to go out on the 14th and I'm working two weeks ahead of schedule. That way me and my video editor are working about three or four weeks ahead of schedule and it kind of goes like that, which is really, really nice. That's what I like to do just to be sure that if something does happen or something does come up, it doesn't mean I'm missing an upload entirely. So I like to work ahead of schedule about two weeks in advance is what I like to do, but I do typically schedule my videos. Okay, so 10 is I actually promote my video. This is a huge step that people forget, okay? You have to promote your video. And one of the biggest ways to do that is to like go to your video maybe in the first hour that it like actually uploaded. So say you upload every Thursday at 9 a.m. from nine to 10 if you can, potentially, or even from 12 to one or whatever, go engage with some of the comments that are there. Go make sure that you that people are seen and that at that moment so they know where to meet you at what time under your video, like not under your video, in the comment section of your video. Also, of course, I like to go ahead and promote my videos on other social platforms. So something that my video editor does, which I absolutely love and we've kind of all, we've worked it all out, is whenever he creates my main video, he also creates like a social short for me as well that I can use to put on TikTok or I can use to put on Instagram or like as a reel. And so that is my way of promoting my video that I can go ahead and upload. Say, hey y'all, the full video is up there live over on YouTube, be sure, to, be sure to go check it out. One of the biggest mistakes I see people making is not promoting their video. YouTube is a search engine platform and it is an amazing platform at doing what it's supposed to do, okay? It understands the assignment, however, 
there's another piece of the assignment that you still have to do. You need to promote your video because you don't want to put like your video success in like the entire hands of just a YouTube algorithm. If you promote your video and you get more people to it like in the earlier moments, that's going to help their alg algorithm, goodness, actually promote it to other people that need to see it, other people within your target audience overall. So just be sure you're promoting your video. You did all this work to get it uploaded and then you just kind of like let it go. No, like you're gonna get all this work, okay? And now do the work that is required in order to get your video pushed out to more people like overall, okay? So I'll repurpose my videos into Instagram Reels. I'll also repurpose them into TikToks, which is pretty much the same piece of content I just do on different platforms. And then I also am sure to upload it to my blog as well. If your video is embedded on another platform, that's actually really, really good for your video. So I do like to make sure that all of my videos, and I just switched over websites, so I'm still in the process of doing all this, but I like to try to make sure that my videos are also like leveraged on my blog. Like it's long form content and that's why I love YouTube because you can take a long form video and turn it into so many different, different like amazing things. So that's what I do. So on my blog, I promote it on Instagram, I promote it on, I try to promote it on TikTok and then I'll put it up on my blog as well as sometimes I will actually send like a quick note to my email list as well. Or maybe I'll just do it once a week to say, hey, did you miss this week's videos? This is what they are about. So just be sure that your people are seeing your video and don't leave it in the hands of just the algorithm or just like YouTube overall. And that really goes for any social platform. Like push your stuff out, okay? Let me know if this video was helpful by commenting down below what was the most impactful part of this video? What is something that you're going to take from this video and really implement it within your content creation workflow overall, okay? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you have any tips or suggestions or things that you do within your workflow that you find really helpful, comment those down below too. Like again, this is a community, this is a family, so you can help other people, including myself, down below in the comment section, okay? So, as always you guys, you know I love you to the moon and back, and I am always rooting for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye y'all.